Let's go just it. Hey, I'm the Drifting Dad, and today I'm going to show you how I designed my drop brackets for my FBRX7. So there's a few different steps that we need to take when we're designing something. First, we are going to get the measurement data, which we did in the last video, and then we are going to actually design the part on the computer, on paper, however we want to do it, and then get the design into a format that can be cut on a laser jet or machined or however the part needs to be made. So now that we have our car measured up, I'm going to go ahead and design some drop brackets. So right here I'm using SOLIDWORKS, this is the 2014 um, version, but they're all pretty similar. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the right plane to start my sketching on just because as we look at the car, this would be on the right side or left side. So I'm going to have obviously the original holes for where the shock mount and the <coughs> control arm mounted. And then I'm going to draw probably uh, three other holes here Daddy, for both. I do like drawing like you. I like drawing them. Going to and I may put two holes for the shocks. So the nice thing here, um, I can just kind of draw what the shapes in SolidWorks. I, I really prefer SolidWorks to a lot of other modeling programs because it is so, um, I guess, drawing based. Uh, you don't have to type in any commands or anything crazy like that. So. Just drawing my basic shape. Oh my. I'm gonna what put this. So basically, hey, what this bracket's gonna Daddy, do is allow me to mount Daddy, the control arm in different positions. Daddy, I'm pressing this button. Wow. Fun? So this is gonna let me uh, mount the control arm in different positions, so that I can try to. Um, get that arm more parallel, that lower control arm more parallel, hopefully reduce some binding. And then when I have different shock mounting locations, that's going to allow me to um, reduce the amount of down travel and in turn reduce the amount of roll that's possible with the suspension. So this is purely an experiment with the, um, so I'm a little sniffly, with the shock arm. I, I know that or with the shock mounting, a lot of people I don't think have done a whole lot uh, with reducing the droop. Daddy, and I want to see what Daddy, that gets us. I got something to show you. What do you got?
For this project, uh, my newest sponsor, Alpha Water Jet Cutting, will be helping me out. They're going to take the DXF file that I'm showing you how to make and cutting that out of eighth inch steel on their Flow Water Jet machine. So please check out the link here. So now that you have a part designed, you're gonna to need to put it in a format that can be read by the, either the water jet plasma, whatever way we're gonna get this cut out. And the easiest way to do that is to make it a DXF. A DXF is a 2D representation of the part, just lines. Basically it's gonna tell the CNC code to travel along the lines that are inscribed on it. So the easiest way to do that in SOLIDWORKS is to make a drawing file and then import the model, make sure that model is at a one-to-one -one scale. And from there, you can save that drawing as a .dxf. And the one thing you have to look out for is to make sure that the, the view that you've put into your drawing is at a one-to-one -one scale because the DXF is gonna save as whatever scale that drawing is. So if it's one to two or two to one, you're gonna have an incorrectly sized part, wasting time and money. Thanks guys for watching my video. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, and comment. And also one other thing, my wife is going through some health issues right now. So it may be uh, a few weeks to a month before I get any more content up. So just stay put, um, always comment on the, this video or previous videos if you have any questions and hopefully I'll be seeing you guys in another month or so.